look who's eating at six o'clock. Because we watched season seven, episode 14, The Cadillac. (laughs) So, Katie. Hello, Derek. How did you like the Cadillac? For an episode I thought I was really going to like, I didn't like it. So I have been waiting all day to ask you Mm -hmm. on the record. Yes. To the best of your knowledge and ability, if you could tell me how gas X works. Just, just uh, like high level, describe how you think it works. Gasex is a, a, a medicine that you take to help when you got tummy troubles. Mm-hmm. Gas, okay. It's not digested and absorbed into your bloodstream, and it doesn't act that way on your body. It is a physical has a physical property. That helps you pass gas. And I don't know if it like breaks up big gas bubbles into smaller ones that are easier to pass or if it collects gas into bigger bubbles. That I'm unclear about. Why are you asking me this? Because I think it's funny. Because you the, the way that you put it earlier, you said- it, <laughs> What did I say differently earlier? It physically breaks up big farts into smaller farts. Isn't, that's what I just said. That's, that's pretty much what you just said. We're going to have to- uh... oh, You're just- I gotta, Now I got to correct this. Watch. I'm going to be 100% right. Physically breaks up big farts into small farts. I think it's called semethicone. Mm. And if I know the name of it- Know what it does. So the Cadillac was written by Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld. This is actually the very last episode of Seinfeld co-written by Jerry Seinfeld. Oh. It was directed by Andy Ackerman and it aired on February 8th, 1996. Did it air in two parts? No, it didn't air in two parts. Oh. Um they Wrote the episode and filmed it for it to be a single episode, but it was running long and they decided instead of cutting stuff that they would pad it out. Yeah, it shows. Um, So they filmed the original episode on January 10th and then February 1st, they like were filming additional scenes to like cut into the episode. So like a week out. So what were the additional scenes? Uh, the one additional scene that it mentioned was uh, the early bird special. Okay. Not a whole storyline, just extra stuff. No, I don't, I don't think any any whole storylines. Like, it, it, no, there's no new storylines. It okay. was going to be George and Merce Tomei, Kramer and the Cable Guy, Jerry buys his data catalog. Mm-hmm. Like, that was there. But it just... Uh, if you told me Kramer and the Cable Guy was something they're like... Well, this was going to be a different episode. We'll just jam it into this one mm. because it doesn't overlap with any other story. No. And it's not good. Mm. So if I were to guess, I would say they shoehorned that into this to, for some reason. But you're telling me it was planned this way. I mean, I think if you took the Kramer storyline uh, about a man and his cable guy and you like fleshed it out to like maybe a full motion picture (laughs) cast an a-list like just like the hottest guy in hottest comedian in hollywood at the time probably would still bomb i haven't seen the cable guy Mm. so you don't understand when i scream come back here so i may slay thee (laughs) you say a lot of stuff okay (laughs) uh so screen crush treated this as two episodes and it ranked it together as the 98th and 99th Best Seinfeld episode. So, so why did it treat it as two? Well, I don't know. I gave it two yeah, rate, okay. like, to... The first half, top ten. Actually, yeah, the first half was better than the second half. So when do you think the... I was surprised at when the second episode started. So Okay. I'm going to say... I'm going to say when Mrs. Choate shows up. In Florida, that's part of episode two. That is the first scene in episode two. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Vulture.com ranked it as the 65th best episode, mm. which is probably a little too high. However, uh, would you like to fact check uh, their episode synopsis? You yeah. Can, you can uh, tell me where they went wrong. Any episode set in Del Boca Vista is bound to be enjoyable, and this two-parter featuring the Elder Seinfeld's exile from their Florida retirement community has plenty of laughs, including a moment of comeuppance for Jerry's atrocious behavior in The Rye. Kramer's cable company war is comparatively negligible, while George's attempted dalliance with Marissa Tomei behind Susan's back toes the line between hilariously terrible and just terrible. They're not at Del Boca Vista yet. They're not at Del Boca Vista. They are at phase, phase two, two at the Pines, the pines at Mar Gables. Mar, Mar Gables. <laughs> and then IMDb gave it an 8.5 out of 10 and ranked it as the 54th best episode. Wow. Yeah, very high. I will say that I was aware of Marissa Tomei and George. Oh, yeah. So I'm pretty sure I haven't seen this because I don't know anything about the Cadillac or about the cable guy or anything. But it was in the zeitgeist for someone who didn't watch that George was going to get set up with Marissa Tomei and then mm. she was in the episode. I, I mean, she's a like a big guest star. It's like Yeah, but I didn't know about Bette Midler. I think Marissa Tomei is a bigger star than the Divine Miss M. To a 14-year-old Derek, yes. <laughs> Name me three movies that Bette Miller has been in that are not Hocus, Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus, Hocus Pocus 2. And uh, 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 First Wives Club? Is she in First Wives Club? Death Becomes Her? Is she in Death Becomes Her? And this big star. You sound so confident about all the movies she's in. Have you? Do you know me? I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen my cousin Vinny. That's the whole premise of this show. That's the whole premise of this podcast. Um, do you, you want to throw it back to last week? Yeah. Jerry uh, buys his dad a Cadillac. Mm -hmm. And it uh, causes all of a lot of problems for his dad. So how'd you do? I think I nailed it. All right, I'll read the synopsis from Netflix. Jerry buys his parents a Cadillac, causing trouble in their retirement community. Kramer fights with a cable guy. George wants to date Marissa Tomei. Elaine is also there. I think Elaine was a bright spot in this episode. <laughs> Should I just go to the point where I wrote, Elaine losing her mind, question mark? What part was that? When... When when she fawns over Jerry as he's holding eight hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> she started fawning before that. But I I okay, we'll we'll get there. I I did some some nineteen ninety six cost of living googling. Okay, who are the guest stars? So there were a lot of returning guest stars. So we had Liz Sheridan returning as uh, Helen Seinfeld. Barney Martin returning as Morty Seinfeld. Heidi Swedberg returning as Susan. Sandy Barron returning as Jack Clumpus. Anne Morgan returning as Evelyn. She was the uh, neighbor who told them that there was votes, et cetera. Sure. She was from the episode The Pen. Uh, we had Francis Bay, who played Mabel Choate, the woman who had been mugged for a marble rye. However, we did have some new guest stars. I don't know if you noticed, but Marissa Tomei was in this episode. Marissa Tomei? She was in The Big Short, The Wrestler, uh, The New Spider-Mens, all the No Way Homes and uh, Far From Homes. She's, she's Aunt May. Hmm. Uh, she was also in My Cousin Minnie, for which she won an Oscar. Oscar winner, Marissa Tomei. I'm unclear on if she has an OnlyFans. Why? Why would you, why would you be unclear on this? There are headlines about her OnlyFans leaking, but like, I don't understand what that means. Like, uh, it's a thing that you put out there. It's like the news has <laughs> leaked. So I think it's, uh, things that she didn't put on the internet. I don't Someone know. has put on OnlyFans. I'm not sure. She looks great. How much did you pay to see it? Zero dollars. We had Walker Olkowitz, who played Nick, the cable guy. Uh, Sorry, can you say his name again? Olkowitz? No, the whole name. 
Walter Olkowitz. Okay. He was in um, Who's the Boss, Night Court, and Twin Peaks. Huh. He sort of looked familiar. Yeah. Uh, the only other person I thought I'd mention was Jesse White, who was the cigar smoking board member. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently he was one of Jerry Seinfeld's uh, idols and he like got a, an autograph from him when he was a kid and now he got to like cast him in his show. Oh, okay. Uh, unfortunately, this was the last uh, acting job that Jesse White had because he'd been working since the like 30s. Hmm. Um, he was in a movie called The Bad Seed, Pajama Party, and It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Hmm. So I'm going to be honest. I didn't write a single thing about Kramer and the Cable Guy. Yeah, yeah I mean. This, this was my problem with it. The whole story played out in the first scene. Like, you know exactly what's going to happen. He's going to toy with the cable guy. Cable guy is going to try and trap him. There's going to be a whole thing. They'll they'll figure it out in the end. There was there was nothing there. There was nothing funny there. So the two things that I think they could have um maybe leaned into more which would have fleshed out that storyline a bit is the in your line of fire parody of them running through the streets and along the rooftops. Is that what it was? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I I did write, is that the Terminator music? It's not the Terminator music. Okay. Um, well, he was sort of running like the Terminator. Kramer runs, or Michael Richards maybe runs weird. Mm-hmm. And whenever they have uh, the body double. <laughs> it looks even weirder. Because, well, one, he's he, he is running weird, but it's a different weird <laughs> than Kramer. And it's very obviously not Kramer. Yeah. Um. The other thing that I think they could have leaned into more, and like it didn't really go anywhere, was when the power company. Yeah, I thought Kramer's apartment, like everything, would have been fried by a yeah. power surge. Why didn't they do anything with that? No. The only chuckle I maybe got from it was when I don't know what the power guy's name was, Shanahan or something, and Kramer goes, "Oh, it's Shanahan now," mm. but just absolutely doing nothing with no. that at all. Total dead end. Um. Which that would be the comeuppance, right? This is I'm yeah. I'm, I'm going to toy with the powers that be. And, I, my and comeuppance my is my apartment up. burns down. Yeah, uh, maybe it's too difficult to like figure out what to do with Kramer if his apartment burns down. But anyways. it doesn't have to burn down. Maybe it fries his hi fi or something. Mm. You know, his what? His hi fi. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Yeah, we don't have to talk about it if you don't want. I mean, that's all I have. We just talked about it. Uh, For that story, I mean. I mean, I, I like, it feels very, like, derivative to be like, why does the cable company make you yes. wait, say, f- from 9 to 12? Yeah. How come they can't do appointments like doctors? It's literally a stand-up bit that has been stretched over yeah. 40 minutes. I wonder if you just took the Kramer storyline. Is that, like, 10 minutes? It's got to be. I don't know. So the actual stand-up, I fully laughed out loud because Jerry's talking about the old people driving in Florida. How they drive slow and sit low. The state flag should just be a steering wheel with two hands. <laughs> I do remember when my uh, grandfather, I can't remember like what age you have to like. It's like 85 or 80 maybe. And... Uh, I think he actually, because he had Alzheimer's, they had to like do like an in-car driving test. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my mom like gave him some tips and she was like, oh, you have to check your blind spot when you're changing lanes. But then he was just checking his blind spot all the time. Mm, That's sad. Going to make a right turn. Better check my blind spot. It's called the eventual left. It's legal in Florida. This is true. I don't understand if you're small and old. Why you wouldn't hike yourself up as high as you could. Maybe that's why I do it. Because you're small and old? In our car. I want to be as high as possible. Your, if your if head sm- graces the ceiling. If you're, so, so you understand if an old person wants to do it, but you don't understand if I want to do it. I'm not talking about – they don't have to jack themselves up through the sunroof just a little higher. They'd, they'd get a lot of uh, visibility if they did, though. You – okay. Your preset in the car is 
maniacal. When I get in, I, I forget every time that you drive and then I get in the car. Every time I sit down, I scream because you are so high up that, like, I, like my, my knees fold up to my face. <laughs> And then my preset, for some reason, I like to sit a little tiny bit closer, but way lower. And so the preset goes closer first, so then I fold further before I'm released. We don't have to rehash uh, our feelings about each other's car (laughs) driving preset. We do until you admit you're wrong. I, I always feel like... You're already in an SUV. You're already above... Most then of the why road do you put uses. the why do you put the the car so low? Why do you put the chair so low? Because I can, I, I'm not looking through the steering wheel. I can fully see the front of the car. That's all you need. Mm. Why why do you need to have your your eyebrows touching the the sun visor? I want to be as high as possible all times. Who was Pippi Longstocking? Did she have anything to do with Hitler? Do you know the answer? I have no idea. So. As as best as I could find out, the woman who wrote Pippi Longstocking was Swedish. She wrote it in the during World War II. She's like this strong hero girl that has nothing to do with Hitler. The author also wrote diaries during the war. Mm. And so they were published. There's still no Hitler connection until Russia apparently has put up um, billboards and bus shelter ads uh, calling this author a Nazi, the founder of IKEA a Nazi, the prime minister of Sweden a Nazi, um, as like propaganda to Russian people to be like, well, we're fighting the Nazis. So what we're doing is th- – so this is, this is obviously after Seinfeld. So it, this is all I found. I don't know. What what makes somebody a Nazi? Oh, boy. You just, well, Russia's just, Russia's just like calling people Nazis. And yes. Like, he, they don't have to justify their uh, beliefs or actions. And no. it's just like, oh, okay, yeah, no, nah, that's person Nazi bad. Yeah. Yeah. Also, wh- why is Russia doing that to Swedish people? Uh, because Sweden supports Ukraine, I guess. Did they just get the colors mixed up? So Jerry killed at this comedy gig. How much do you think he made? Um, $100,000. Wow. How long was he... How long was this gig? Was well, this he comes a in like he comes. Yeah, well, he comes in carrying mail, and it seems like he's been gone for a while. Mm. So, you know, a he has a, he, he has a, he has enough surplus of money to buy his father a Cadillac, which I don't know what the MSRP of Cadillacs are. I assume you've looked it up, but the, I'm going to guess north of forty thousand dollars. When he comes back, Kramer is very excited to see him. So it does suggest that he's been gone a while. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair. Where did he go, though? To do his comedy show. No, but like where? The comedy show place. Mm. He's already in New York. Kramer gets him to show him the check that he got. And he goes, God, you're rich. I feel like it changed the relationship. What did he say? He's like, I tell you how much I make. And I'm always impressed. I think it's always surprised. In 1996, a Cadillac, fully loaded, probably cost $42,000. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so I'm guessing he made at least that. I'm, I I kind of thought maybe he brought home thirty grand, But if he bought the you know, top-of-the-line caddy, maybe it was fifty grand. Mm. I, I also looked up, what's the value of a 1996 uh, Cadillac? DeVille or whatever it was called at the time today. And the trade-in value, do you want to make a guess? $500. 63 to $300. Yeah. I I mean, I feel like in an actual vehicle needs to be worth more than that, no matter how old it is. Right? It's, it's still full of metal that you could recycle. It's got to be worth more than that. Well, I'm like I'm sure trade in value is different than material value. I guess. Like, but like 
you can't strip it and like use those parts to like repair another Cadillac because there's probably only one 1996 Cadillac uh, DeVille. We were talking the other day about Cadillacs. Uh, As we do. (laughs) Well, remember, uh, brought up like the saying, I brought up the saying like, it's the Cadillac of Mm. blah, blah, blah. Cadillac right? doesn't have that cachet anymore. Doesn't, and I was like, are there any Cadillacs that are popular? And you were like, oh, the Cadillac uh, Escalade is sure. still Escalade. Yeah. Is that a Cadillac? On the roof of my Escalade in the sun or in the shade. Yes, it's a car. It's a car? It's a Cadillac Escalade? Yes, it's a, yes Cadillac Escalade. Anyways, I recently like saw we, you were watching TV and an ad for an electric Cadillac hmm. came on. Mm-hmm. And it was like, the time is now. Isn't it called like a Compaq or something? Executive. That's a computer brand. I know. It's something that ends in a Q. Can't think of the word now. I wrote later, I had forgotten it was a double episode. And then right after I wrote that, it ended. And I was like, I'm surprised it's now over. Because it ends weirdly. Do you want to talk about the ending? Yeah. So the ending is a shot for shot parody of the movie Nixon, which came out the year before. Did you know that before looking it up? Oh, yeah, I I, I love the movie Nixon. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have watched the movie Nixon probably two dozen times. So I obviously have not seen it. I'm like, okay, this is a movie parody. What is it? And I didn't really have any inkling until Morty Seinfeld does the like pl- like the the peace signs in the air yeah. but he's smiling so big so i was like is that supposed to be nixon i don't know mm. so it's nixon eh yeah i've never seen the movie you you um it was it was kind of weird and i think this is the problem with uh referential humor referential humor yeah uh is if you, if you don't get the reference you're like this isn't you're not in on the joke. This isn't funny at all. But at the time, it was a salient reference. I'm sure at the time, 14-year-old Derek didn't understand what was going on. What's the other movie? The 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 chase scene? What was that one? In the line of fire? It's Clint Eastwood, who, I mean, now I know he's terrible, but at the time. <laughs> Marissa Tomei is sitting at home, Elaine. She's sitting at home. A couple times in this episode, Jerry or... His parents refer to him as a very good boy. There's there's a lot of I think Jerry refers to himself because I wrote it down. He wrote, Yeah, I'm a, or he says, Yeah, I'm a good boy. <laughs> oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to say, in relation to Elaine losing her mind at eight hundred and fifty dollars, uh in nineteen ninety six the average rent for a one bedroom in New York was fifteen hundred dollars. So sh- he's holding like half her rent and casually flipping through it. So I could kind of see, you know, her getting distracted by that. Is she hard up for cash? No, but why does she go go gaga for Jerry? Do you remember, um, do you remember a subway ad from 30 years ago? Probably. I can't remember what it was advertising, but it was like, it was divided in half and it said like, what men want, I don't know, probably like boobs or something. And there's a picture of boobs or something. <laughs> and then there's a picture of what women want, and it was a brain. Oh, uh, yeah, um, that kind of rings a bell. My friends and I got caught on the TTC graffitiing uh, like a dollar sign over top of the brain. Hmm. But then the security guard like came in. We were fully like drawing on this ad in permanent marker. Mm-hmm. And he was like, hey, I don't want to see you kids running along the platform anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were so confused with like permanent marker <laughs> having been caught like red handed doing the thing that we were anyways. Because men, women, dollars. It's a negative stereotype of women that they're that, that we're gold diggers. Yeah. So I don't like that Elaine is suddenly a goofy gold digger. Yeah, she's really attractive in this episode, though, don't you think? <laughs> she's talking on the phone to Jerry. She's like, oh, Jerry, Jerry. Bye. 
I thought she looked really good when Susan came to accuse her of sleeping with George. <laughs> She's probably the second most attractive woman in this episode. Oh, Marissa Tomei. <laughs> George goes, I like full lips. Something you can really put the lipstick on. Sounds gross. That sounds like puts the lotion on its skin. So while George is arguing with, uh, I think someone's arguing with Elaine, he says, it's not cheating if there's no sex. Hmm. Hmm. To which, uh, I can't remember if it's Elaine or Jerry says, would it be a problem to tell Susan? Hmm. And George says, oh, it's a problem. Yeah. So I liked when uh, George is trying to justify, uh, first he first he's describing this all to Jerry because he wasn't at the coffee shop. And then later he's trying to justify it all to Elaine. Hmm. She likes short, stocky, bald, funny men. Jerry goes, I noticed you threw Stocky in there. Mm -hmm. And then Elaine's distracted by the money and she agrees to call Katie. And George is doing a dance where he's just, his arms are out and he's just swinging them side to side. He's doing this weird like dance, <laughs> swinging his hips. I wrote later, Despicable George. Yeah, that's that's who George is. Why does he not lie to Marissa Tomei. He lies to everybody else, including himself. Why does he come out and tell her that he's engaged? Is it, Has she turned him into new George who doesn't lie? Um, I don't know. I guess that's an interesting question. You know, is he it, also, he talks about how, um, you know, comfortable he feels. He doesn't feel nervous, like, talking to her. That's not him so at all. Maybe, maybe, maybe she was the one and, hmm. uh, and then she punches him right, right in the, the face. Jaw. Yeah. I, I like that she and Susan both punch George. It's not a slap. Mm. It's a, it's a, it's a nice right hook. It's a knuckle sandwich. Mm -hmm. So here's something that I was thinking while watching this episode. Mm -hmm. A car seems like a very impractical gift. Yeah. Like, it's one thing if you're like, hey, I'm going to buy you a car, and you decide, and it's like, hey, this is the car you want, and you're all like, you know, but when you're just like, I bought you a car, here you go. Isn't that you know, every, There's a lot of paperwork. Isn't that every teenager's, you know, dream is to get a car on their 16th birthday? They're not, they're not shopping for one. They just, they want a car in the driveway with a that, big bow on it. That, that's different, though. Like, the, the parents still own that car and pay for the insurance and have it, like, registered. Sure. So this year, you're going to have to go through a whole bunch of paperwork, <laughs> transfer it into his dad's name, get insurance. It's probably going to be, like, a monthly bill that is more than what he was paying for whatever car he had before this. Sure. He's saddling him with... Would you like some debt? Here's some debt. Well, no, he, he bought an the investment. car outright. He's just paying insurance, which is probably going to be a little higher because it's a brand new Cadillac versus whatever he was driving. Yeah. But, uh, you know, his dad always wanted him, wanted one. He's excited about it. Uh, Morty Seinfeld opens the Chips Ahoy. What do you call it? Chip Ahoy? I only have a few good years left. I want a Chip Ahoy. I'm having a Chip Ahoy. There's already a bag of cookies open, but it was Snackwells. Of course Crash it was Snackwells. Yeah. I wrote down in this scene, I don't want to be old. I think there's, no offense, too many old people in this uh, episode. Uh, The politics of this retirement home remind me of, and maybe I shouldn't say this. <laughs> no, uh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> it reminds me a lot about my parents and their friends group. <laughs> and the like politics of like, oh, we can't have uh, blah, 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 be in the same golf foursome as blee, 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 because they don't get along. And then, oh, didn't get invited to the Johnsons on uh, Friday. And it just sounds, I think, I think mostly it just sounds exhausting. So and so is organizing the, the pickleball tournament mm -hmm. and they've put us uh, last on the bracket. When we organized the tennis tournament, we put them first. Uh, I love your parents and their community sounds, like you said, exhausting. <laughs> but I mean, I guess like, I guess that that's what they got going on. You're retired. What else are you going to do? Yeah. Organize a washer toss tournament. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there, I was going to say, there's a lot of awkward cuts in this episode. It really does feel like 
something was wrong and then they had to like mm. Frankenstein it. They uh, bring back Art Vandalay. Mm-hmm. So I think this is the second time since season one or two is the stakeout where George has brought up the name Art Vandalay. So George puts his plan into action. He's leaving on the Saturday to go and meet with uh, Marissa. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, tells Susan his plan and she immediately, are you having an affair with Elaine? So do you think Susan is justified in asking these questions? So it it seems like it's like an insecure person would automatically jump to, I don't believe you say what you're doing. You're having an affair. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this is a fictionalized world where everything is like amplified, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, but then to also go like I think George like explains it well enough. Sure. Um, but yeah. then to like go to Elaine's apartment and to like not enough time has passed in the universe. Like George should still be there, technically. That was what I was thinking. She was trying to like catch George. Oh, Adeline's. Adeline's. Right. Like where like where is George where's George supposed to be when well, Susan yeah. is Adeline? Elaine never says, Well, he just left. Yeah. Or anything. Like that's a big hole in the story. What does he uh import? Chips. Mostly potato and some corn. What does he export? Diapers. <laughs> Why do they pick him like Importing export? I understand <laughs> Elaine felt left out. Yeah. This seems like why why importing exporting? Why I was adamant that he should stick with the importing. You know, my biggest problem is that if you tell a story, it's never gonna be the same twice. Mm. If your facts are exactly the same in exactly the same order, you've rehearsed it and it's probably not true. Mm-hmm. This is the eyewitness. Yeah. You know, problem with eyewitness testimony. So if it's exporting and not importing, who who cares? Right? Like, I know they are lying, but Susan thinks she's really, you know, got him. I, I think it's one thing to, like, tell the story the exact same way multiple times. It's different to m- mix up the big and major. Like, all of the story is, is he wants to focus on one and not the other. And- mm-hmm. That got, yeah, but also you, if you I'm George, said, like, I don't care, right? Yeah, so I might mix she, it up in my mind. I, th- I think that is a better explanation than I'm like Elaine yeah. mixing it up, anyways. Yeah. Do you think Marissa told me how to bump it? I don't think bump it's existed then. It was just teased that high. Marissa can do it. Hmm. I don't think I've seen those new Spider-Man movies. I I don't think I've seen anything she's been in. The Tom Holland Spider-Man movies? No. Uh, you haven't seen The Wrestler? No. I think you and I watched The Wrestler together. I 100% have not seen The Wrestler. When did The Wrestler come out? Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Story doesn't check out. Why would I watch a movie that was over a year old that I was not interested in in the first place? To make you happy? Um, Marissa Tomei's in it. <laughs> she plays a stripper. Oh, well, let's put it on. And then uh, what was the other one? Uh, open open your eyes. <laughs> what was the second one that George, open your eyes. that George was watching? The second one was Open Your Eyes, starring Marissa Tomei. <laughs> what was it called? Only You. Only You. <laughs> I've never heard of or seen Only You. That has some of the same letters. Open Your Eyes. <laughs> That's honestly all I have for this episode. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of all I have. Um, do you want to watch a supercut of every time they said Marissa Tomei in this episode? I'm going to guess they said it 32 times. It was awkward when they didn't say her full name. When George just called her Marissa, I felt weird about it. Who is she? Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei? Marissa Tomei sitting home, Elaine. <laughs> Can I ask you something? You uh, you ever hear of Marissa Tomei? Marissa Tomei? Mm-hmm. How does she know Marissa Tomei? 
I, I don't know. I didn't ask. You didn't ask how she knows Marissa Tomei? Marissa Tomei. She said I was just her type. Marissa Tomei loves funny, quirky, bold men. Marissa Tomei. I know Marissa Tomei won an Oscar for that. Marissa Tomei. He wants me to fix him up with Marissa Tomei. She's Marissa Tomei, Elaine. An Oscar winner. How can I live the rest of my life knowing I could have been with Marissa Tomei? What about Marissa Tomei? Anyway, I was thinking about what you said about the... Me and Marissa, you know? That's another Marissa Tomei movie. <laughs> yeah, I have a thing for Marissa Tomei. Who would try and fix me up with Marissa Tomei? And I love you, Marissa. You have got to get me Marissa Tomei's phone number. I just got off the phone with Marissa Tomei. I just spoke to Marissa Tomei. Oh, Marissa. What? I'm, you know, engaged. Do you know she's uh, Julianne Moore's cousin? Marissa Tomei? Marissa Tomei. I didn't know that. Neither did they. Then they were on that one of those, like, oh. who do you think you are shows. Did you know that Larry David and Bernie Sanders found out that they're cousins on that show? <laughs> Have you seen the scene where they find it out? No. No? No. Oh, it's 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 good. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> well, next week we have the showerhead. What's it about? The uh, building installs low flow shower heads in oh. all the showers, and so uh, they have to try and get some bootleg. Uh, mm. Sorry, gray market uh, shower heads. So I do have some corrections from last week. The seven. So we were talking about once removed. Oh, yeah. So removed refers to generations, like up and down. Okay. So my cousin's kid is my first cousin once removed. Okay. So if you want to know, uh, like, the, the number of cousins, that's how many greats in the grandparent you have to go back and generation like back down. yeah yeah okay so my second cousin and i share great grandparents not grandparents cuz there's you you count the greats and the grands sure yeah so that clears it up yeah i think so okay wait if you have to count the greats and the grands yeah isn't that also generations that you're counting if you go across a generation wait a minute now, see, I was so confident that I understood. Okay, wait, wait. I think I get it. <laughs> so, first, it, it has nothing to do with marriage. That was one thing we were like. Has nothing to do with marriage? <laughs> All illegitimate. Um, we we posited that it was. Oh yeah, yeah, no, through no, marriage. No, no. So Doesn't this have anything is, to do with that. This is all blood relatives we're talking about. Is it only blood relatives? Yeah. But I have a I have cousins that I don't have blood relations with. Yeah. Yes, you do. I said I do. I I do have cousins that I don't have. No, that's not. Then they're not your cousins. You have a common ancestor at some point. If it's not your grandparents, which are your usual cousins, then it's your great or great 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 grandparents. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I guess so. <laughs> How could they be your cousins if you're not related? Uh, I was thinking of someone, and I wasn't going back far enough, and it was through marriage. But if you go back another generation, then we do have. Do you have, like, some loops in your family tree? You have extensively researched my family tree, and you do know that if you go back far enough, there are loops. But I was thinking of... Okay. So his grandmother's sister married my grandfather's brother. Uh Uh-huh. So, so I'm, their I'm, parents are they're your shared ancestor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but like when I think of like so when people ask me like, "Oh, you guys are cousins, right?" I'm like, "Well, sort of because of that like th- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because th- then it's just like at the grandparent level. Sure. But if you go back to great grandparents, we we have a great grand we have great grandparents in common. So you are second cousins. Uh yeah. There you go. Who's removed? Uh, our daughter is his second cousin once removed, <laughs> but he does not have kids. So, or his dad would be my second cousin once removed. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. His dad would be my second cousin once removed. Okay. Okay. All right. And then his grandmother would be my second cousin twice removed. Mm -hmm. And she's married to my great uncle. Circles. No, her sister's married to my great uncle. (laughs) Okay. All right. I just had a correction about sprains and strains. It's not um, a measure of severity. We think we said strains are worse or not as bad as sprains, but that's not true. Uh, Strains occur to muscles Mm. and sprains occur to your joints and ligaments. Yeah. So in that episode, they were talking about Einstein. Oh, yeah. And the atomic bomb. And we were like, did he have anything to do with it? And we didn't know. So the famous... No, we we knew that he didn't have anything to do with it. That's not entirely true. So his E equals MC squared equation explains the energy released in an atomic bomb, but it doesn't explain how to build one. But... Explains everything. But... He wrote to President Roosevelt suggesting the United States research atomic weapons before the Germans before the Germans did. So that was his involvement. Mm. And then later he regretted it. I mean, obviously. <laughs> Kinda have to. I mean, somebody was gonna do it at some point. Yeah. So when Newman was doing the you'll split the bike, um you you told me that's the judgment of Solomon. Mm-hmm. In the Bible, did you know they were talking about a baby? I did not know that. The thing that two people were arguing about and Solomon said, we'll split it down the middle, was a baby. Well, their understanding of medicine back then was somewhat <laughs> rudimentary. And it's like, okay, the one who says, no, I'd rather give up my share, let the baby live. And then then sh- mm. they get it because they actually, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Bible's f***ed up. Okay, final... Final correction. This isn't a correction. It's a fun fact. I thought you were going to bring up Rosie and the Rug Makers. It's a story from the Old Testament. <laughs> you're, you're messing with me. Go ahead. What's your fun fact? Did you know the band Silverchair? Remember them? I do remember them. Used to be called the George Costanza Trio. When? When? Because I feel like Silverchair was very much like... At, of this time? Yeah. Yeah, they probably were told to change it. Oh. Um, but yeah, they were called the George Costanza Trio. <laughs> okay. It doesn't rock as hard as Silver Not Chair. Not quite. Yeah. Uh, does Silver Chair rock? If it's a rocking chair. Anyways. Bye-bye. Bye. The rocking chair? Oh, I get it. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?